Goodness me, service interval incongruity scandal at the king of mediocrity, Toyota. Seemingly, anyway, one does wonder if they're making this all up as they go along. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. You can hit me up on the website for that. Now, Emmanuel Galea has written to me regarding, quote, Toyota Rev4 2018 all-wheel drive 2.5 petrol GX and this staggering incongruity, he says. My wife has the Toyota 2017 Camry Atara SX 2.5 litre. Terribly sorry to hear that. I mean, nobody deserves that, clearly. And the service is 15,000 kilometres a one year. Obviously, whichever comes first. Don't forget that. I have the 2018 RAV4 2.5 litre. The motor is identical, but the service on the RAV is six months or 10,000 kilometres. Is that correct? As I find it hard to understand, as the engines are identical. So I just trotted off to redbook.com.au and checked the service interval. I agree with the RAV, six months, 10,000 kilometres, whichever comes first, don't forget that. The other one, though, the Camry is actually 15,000 kilometres or nine months, not 12, okay, whichever comes first. So nine months, 15,000 for the Camry or six months, 10,000 for the RAV. And yes, the engines do seem very similar. There's a puftinth in it in terms of their peak outputs, but they're the same displacement. Essentially, they're the same engine. So what gives? And I'd suggest, well, one's a 2017 car and the other's a 2018 car. They may have made some minor material difference sort of changes to some components in the engine, perhaps oil spec or God knows what. They might have had some feedback about, you know, failures in service and maybe reducing the service interval or whatever. Just tweaking it as they go along iteratively. Car makers do this sort of thing all the time. I'd also suggest that even if the engines are identical, the drive line's not identical. The RAV is all-wheel drive, and obviously there's different components there. There's a transfer case in the centre, and then there's all those components pumping the drive to the back at times when the rear drive kicks in, so there might be servicing implications there. Also, the RAV4 is heavier, and it has a heavier tow capacity. Conceivably, it might be used in a harsher environment than the Camry, which might shrink both the distance and time intervals for servicing as well. So there could easily be a rational basis for this kind of thing. However, what I would say there is that car makers don't retrospectively adjust service intervals. You buy the car, it's specified, that's the service interval, and it is absolutely imperative that you stick with that, okay? Even after the warranty, because if you've got some consumer law type claim down the track well and truly after the warranty has expired, one of the easiest ways for them to deal with you by just going, piss off, mate, is if you don't stick to the service interval. And I'd further suggest that servicing is cheap. It's like dirt cheap because if you've got the money to buy a new car and you've got a reasonably current car and you've got the money to tip fuel into it, you've certainly got the money to service it once every six, nine or 12 months, whenever the manufacturer says. You just do. You've got the money. I get that servicing is a grudge purchase because, you know, what do you get? You drop off your car and you get it back. It feels exactly the same and you are three to $600 lighter of hip pocket. And that's never nice because you could do more interesting things with the three to 600 bucks. But Servicing is a comparatively trivial cost. You know, if it costs you 500 bucks a year to keep your car on the road, servicing wise, then that's 10 bucks a week, which is nothing. I think you'd agree. Like most people spend more on that just with coffee or lunches or whatever. I mean, 10 bucks a week, who cares? Okay. And if you think it's a big hit for servicing, all right, I'd suggest that it's really lucky you don't have to go to the post office once a month and pay the depreciation because that would be a killer. What is it, like 200 bucks a week for depreciation on a forty or $50,000 car? 
that's a hideous cost. And the reason people aren't marching in the friggin' street over it is because it's hidden. It's under the radar and you only ever get it like in your face when you sell that car, okay? And then it's kind of a big hit. But anyway, the main thing here is just stick to the schedule and realise that even though it seems incongruous, there might actually be a really good rational basis for these seemingly different service intervals on identical engines. 